Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from Megatech. For the first time on the channel, I'm going to be building a desktop. My sister actually asked me to build her a machine and and I thought, why not make a video about it? So as you can see on my table, it is pretty full. It has all the components that you're going to be needing to build your gaming PC. But take note guys, this build doesn't include the monitor or a keyboard and mouse. Since my sister said she's going to be reusing her old monitor as well as her gaming keyboard and mouse. So what are we waiting for guys? Let's get this gaming PC build started. Alright, so before we start with the actual build guys, let me go through the parts that I've got on my table. So let's start with the heart of the gaming PC which is your CPU and in this specific build, I'm going to be using Intel's i3 12th gen. This is the 12100F, you can see here, 12100F and it is on the LGA1700. So this is actually the cheaper version of the 1200 because if you get the i3 regular 12100, that has a built-in GPU so you're not going to be needing a dedicated GPU or a graphics card in order to run your machine. But in this case, since we're aiming for a gaming build, we're not going to be using a CPU with a dedicated a APU. I'm going to be putting up the prices of these parts near the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Now, as for the motherboard, I opted to use MSI's Pro V660M-P. This is just a DDR4 model. If you're after higher DDR speeds or the DDR5, then you have to get a more expensive motherboard to cater to that. And since we're working within a budget, if you went for a higher priced motherboard that has DDR5 support, you have to buy a DDR5 memory sticks, which also costs a bit more. But in this case, this will do since we're just working with an i3 12100F. This is actually actually more than enough for your motherboard needs. It does say it is Windows 11 compatible, uh, TPM 2.0, so once you get this up and running, you will get the prompt to upgrade to Windows 11 for free. So it does have four memory slots, you've got support for an M.2, pretty much all you're going to need. In the case of memory, I just went for 3200 MHz sticks. These are T-Force Delta RGB, it comes in to 8 GB sticks. I went for the white model because we're looking at a more of a white build, which, which explains why the case that I actually got as well is colored white. If you guys don't care about RGB, then you can get memory sticks that are non-RGB and that will actually cost a lot less. So if you're working on a tight budget, then that's something to consider. And here is where we actually spent almost half of the budget which is the Zotac Gaming 3060Ti. This is the Twin Edge OC Edition. And in my opinion, the 3060Ti is the graphics card to get as it has the best performance to price ratio. It performs almost as well as the 3070, but the price is a lot less than the 3070. In my opinion, if you have a choice between a 3060 and a 3060Ti, then I would highly recommend getting the 3060Ti instead. And this is actually one of the best times to get a graphics card because prices are near or even lower than MSRP. I guess that has a lot to do with the prices of crypto like Bitcoin and Ethereum going down, which is why there are a lot of people getting rid of their mining rigs and less people buying these up just to do mining. Let me know if you guys are interested in me making a dedicated video on how to mine on your personal desktop or laptop and we'll see whether it's going to be worth your time and your electricity. Of course, I actually for RGB fans, I went for the Inplay Ice Tower. I'll discuss this during the build later about the pros and the cons. I actually got two boxes, so I have six fans in total. And since the i3 is not going to run too hot, I'm not really concerned about getting high performance fans on this specific build. Now for the CPU cooler, CPU I've got already comes with a stock cooler. But if you want some RGB goodness, you can go for one of the more highly rated CPU coolers, which is the Vitro V5. Performance is almost on par with the higher price CPU coolers but at a fraction of the cost. So this is one of the CPU coolers that I was really interested in getting so I'm going to be running some tests later on so I'm just going to be putting the stock cooler first and then I'll compare it with the Vitro V5 later on. As for the power supply, of course be needing a power supply to, to power your PC. I went for the FSP 650 watts. This is 80 plus bronze. It should do well enough. Uh, the, the only reason I went a higher rated uh, power supply because I am 
we're going to be running a 3060 Ti and the minimum power supply that is required to run that is at least 600 watts. Though I have heard that uh, people were able to run it without issues on lower rated PSU like 500 and 550 watts but I wouldn't want to risk it. This FSP is one of the more affordable power supply options you've got but it is pretty well rated. Now as for the case, let's see if I can get it on screen. So basically I opted for the in-play. So I actually went for the in-play Meteor 3. This is actually a pretty light case. And since I did get a lot of RGB fans and that is one of the main reasons I got a case that had tempered glass side. So one of the main reasons I went for the case because it has a mesh in the front though it doesn't have a dust filter and it does remind me of the Fractal Meshify series though at a fraction of the cost as well. So we are, as I said, working within the budget. And you can actually just pull it off like so. So as you can see here, this is the front of the case. Like I said, no dust filter. So if you're going to be putting this PC in a dusty environment, so I do suggest cleaning this at least every month. And one thing that this case has got going for it, so this is the top of the case. I've got the power button. I've got your reset switch and it has an LED switch. So probably going to be connecting this to the RGB controller or hub that comes with the in-play RGB fan that I got. So you can either use a remote control that actually came with it or you can use this button to cycle through the LED or the RGB mode on those ARGB fans. And you've got your usual mic, headphones, USB 2.0 and USB 3 headers here and of course we're going to be making sure that we connect them to the motherboard later on. And what this has is a magnetic dust filter on top it and i do appreciate it is colored white as well but only a disadvantage with going with a white build is of course uh, over time it's going to look less white and more yellowish but hopefully this case will stand up well to that and at the bottom of the case if you have a spare dust filter it you can actually put it on the bottom especially if you're going to be orienting your power supply with fan facing down and you've got these uh, rubber feet seems to be made of plastic so i guess you have to be careful and not drop your case too much these might get damaged over time and looking at it here this does seem to be the hard drive cage at the bottom and as for the specs of the case you do have support for a regular size SATA hard drive a 2.5 and you can probably put a 2.5 on the top here or if you just want to use a double-sided tape you can put your SATA drives on the top or you can opt to put some fans here but I'm not sure how well that will go because there are some intrusions right there so that might affect the spin of the fans but overall not a bad looking case it is a bit light but it is expected because of the price range so if you're looking for a very affordable case then this is the one to get this will set you back around 1100 uh, philippine peso which is give or take around 20 to 22 us dollars so it's dirt cheap to be honest would have actually preferred hinge type tempered glass but in this case this is a super budget case so that's something that you can't expect at this price range guys okay so the tempered glass is pretty thick still glass so be careful when handling it so it, it is toolless so you don't, don't actually need the screwdriver to get the sides off the side panel is pretty light as well a bit flimsy will do the job which is basically to cover the side of the case and here is the case guys so in terms of motherboard support i don't think you're going to be able to fit full-size atx ports on here a uh, better option for that would be to get a full tower or a mid tower that's actually bigger than this this is kind of a weird dimension because it's actually a lot taller than it is wider so you have to be careful about the motherboard that you're going to be getting and make sure it actually fits here and since it isn't so wide another concern that you have to consider is the length of the video card that you're going to be putting into this the 3060 ti that i got is just a dual fan so i'm not worried about it fitting in this case but if you got one of the more powerful uh, gpus i don't think that's going to be fitting in this case so Let's go ahead and start putting stuff in a case.
right guys so seems to be up and running did detect that it has the 12th gen i3 12100f 16 gb of memory got my sata drive detected it's 240 gb and a one terabyte hard drive so these aren't included in the parts because these are some spare hard drives that i've been using for some time and i'm just going to be reusing them to make the most of this motherboard since it does have an m.2 slot you could opt to use an m.2 sata vme drive and that's going to offer a lot more performance than just your sata drives but if like me you've had your pc for a while you've got a couple of hard drives lying around why not reuse them because that will definitely bring the overall price of your build down but if you have the extra cash to spare then might as well splurge for an m.2 drive now i'm still trying to figure out how i can get the memory to actually uh, read at 3200 it's rated as 3200 so let's go ahead and save and reset installing windows now hopefully we'll be in windows and be able to do some testing on this 3060 ti all right while i'm installing some applications and games to test on this new pc let me do a bit of cable management all right guys still a bit of a mess at the bottom but looking better uh, I think I'll just stop here for now and let's focus on the benchmark test and gaming test on this machine. PC has finally been built and if you want to see some temperatures and benchmarks, here are a couple. So I tested it with the benchmark Cinebench first, see how well the stock cooler performs with the Vitro V5. Then I tested it with the 3D Mark benchmark test. Followed by God of War. And finally, Final Fantasy VII Remake. So, the, so with the i3-12100F paired with NVIDIA's GeForce 3060 Ti, it's actually a perfect match guys. The GPU is not being bottlenecked by the CPU. As you can see with the average frame rates, even when putting all these things to ultra, this PC can actually handle it without breaking a sweat. So this is how the PC looks with the Vitro V5. So in order to make sure that 
your uh, Vitro V5 RGB is synced with the other fans, I had to make use of a dedicated RGB hub, which you can see right there. The price is not too bad. If you want all your lights to sync, then this is the only way that you can do it. If you're using the same fans that I use, which is the in-play iStar fans. The main reason I went for the fans is because it's pretty cheap. It actually comes in three packs, so I bought two, three packs. Uh, and the other reason that I went with the in-play fans is because I'm using an in-play case. Now, if you're interested with the pricing for the parts that I use on this build, I use the Intel Core i3 12100F and I use the MSI Pro B660M-P DDR4 motherboard. I went with 16 GB of RAM and I chose the T4's uh, Delta RGB. And as for the video card or GPU, I went with Zotac 3060Ti Twin Edge OC. For the case, I used the Intel Meteor 3. For the case fans, I went with 6 fans but you can get them in packs of 3 so I bought 2 packs. For the cooler, the stock cooler didn't perform the way I wanted so I went with the Vitro V5 which is one of the better performing CPU coolers at an affordable price range. And since I wanted to sync the Vitro V5 RGB with the other Intel fans, went ahead and purchased a dedicated dedicated RGB hub which is the cool moon RGB hub it's not too pricey but it'll get the job done and one good thing is it has a magnetic back plate so you don't have to use double-sided tape it'll just stick to any metal part on your case so if you're strictly going to be gaming at 1080p and maybe a bit at 1440p I can highly recommend this build doesn't cost an arm and a leg because most of the savings you got is from getting the i3 12100F which is very competitively priced you can go with a cheaper motherboard if budget is a concern since since you're just running an i3, you might not need some of the features that come with the motherboard that I chose for this build. And of course, 3060 Ti, as I mentioned before on the start of the video, this is one of the best price to performance graphics card right now. So with that said guys, I really enjoyed this build. I've been into building PCs and into PC gaming way before I started making videos about mobile gaming. And this is actually one of my passion guys, so getting back into it is very refreshing for me. So if you guys want to see more of these kind of videos, I would love to discuss it on the comment section down below. So I guess I'll go ahead and end this PC build and quick benchmark and temperature test on this specific gaming PC. A sub would be highly appreciated. Please like and subscribe, hit that bell icon notification, and see you all in my next one.